All right, welcome to Saturday nights at the house. How you guys doing tonight? Yeah. Yes. I want to invite you guys to stand. We're going to worship. good amen? amen all right father we just love you god we thank you for your presence lord and father as we seek you tonight god um god i, th I thank you that you're gonna move uh in this place god in, in amazing ways and so we just love you and we give you all the glory and all the praise for it um in jesus name amen, amen. all right if uh if anybody needs healing in their body tonight um, we're going to have people that are going to be on the sides over here. So I, I kind of want to invite you on up front to the sides. 
And uh, there's going to be some people that are going to pray for you. Um, and we've experienced some awesome healing in this place. Um, and the scripture says, don't forget his benefits, that he forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. And so that's the sure word of God. Um, and so if you need prayer for, for healing tonight, I want to invite you to, to receive prayer on the sides over here. And some of these people, some, some have been healed from cancer and all different kinds of things. Um, and it's because God is good and he's already paid the price for it. So receive that tonight.
Let's sing the first verse again. Come, they told me, power up a pump pump. A newborn king to see, power up a pump pump. Our finest gifts we bring, power up a pump pump. To live before the king, power up a pump pump. Rumpa pum pum, rumpa pum pum. So to wanna him, pum rumpa pum pum. Me and my drum. So. When I asked God what to talk about, my mind became overwhelmed with so many issues and I felt like there were so many people that are stressed or maybe you've been believing for something and you just keep hitting a wall or maybe you don't feel like you have any joy right now. You know, you're doing everything right, but you're just not breaking through. And he... First, he reminded me about the rocks and how they are going to cry out in praise, even if we're not. And then he brought me back to the beginning of when Jesus came. And I'm going to read in Luke 2, 8. So there were some shepherds 
in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flock. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of the heavenly angels appeared with the angels singing, Praise to God, glory to God in the highest in heaven, and peace on earth unto, unto those who, whom he is pleased with. When the angels went away from them back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told him what the angel had said about the child. All who heard were amazed at what the shepherds had said. And God really wants you to realize the meaning of the season. And it's so easy to be like, oh, yeah, it's about Jesus. And you know it. But do you really know it? Because I was thinking and I became overwhelmed with the joy about, can you imagine, you had been praying for how long for a Savior? And then he is there suddenly. Can you imagine your joy and the praise that you will want to be giving because the thing that you have been promised for centuries is finally come. And it wasn't perfect. I doubt Mary wanted to have the Messiah in a manger, but God still came through. And in the end, it was all perfect. It was all how it was meant to be. So when you're at a wall and you feel like things aren't lining up, and maybe things aren't how you want them to be. God wants you to remember that he knows what he's doing. That he's been here. And this season, it's so important. Because this is when you can be loud about loving. And loud about having joy in Christ. And society doesn't understand what Christmas is about. But we do. And we have that. 360, 4, 5, 6, I don't know. We have it all the time, though. <laughs> I was trying to think of a leap year. <laughs> Anyways, we have it all the time, and especially when we can shout it basically from the rooftops, this time of year is when we should really take charge, be giving on every occasion, be joyous in all things, Praise him in all circumstances, never forgetting the victory. If a baby was victorious, aren't you? I mean, he, he was pretty helpless, I'd say, you know, at his current state, even though he was the Messiah. But by doing the will of God, everything was still planned and everything still came with purpose. So when you see your wall, you say, well, my Savior was born in a manger, and he saved everyone, and he's inside of me, so therefore, this wall will move. And as we sing our next song, I just, there was so much to talk about, really, but it was really just Jesus was basically saying, do you remember where it all began? Do you remember how everything started? And do you remember why I came? Because if you remember why I came, nothing else matters. And everything else makes sense. And you no longer are worried about the finances or loved ones who aren't doing so hot because you know the truth and you know why this world is here. And you can boldly go through any storm so we're going to sing another song. So, Father, I just thank you for tonight, God, as we worship you um, and the people have come forward for prayer, for healing. And so, Father, I just thank you for those who have been healed. And we don't have to fight for our healing, God because you already fought for it. 
you already won the battle for us. And I thank you, God, that even when we feel helpless, even you were in a manger. And God, that we can just abide in your presence. And in your presence, God, and from your presence, we can experience freedom and revelation in you, God, that, no, that lets us know, God, that uh, you've set us far above, far above. Let hope rise and darkness trembles in your holy light. That every eye will see Jesus our God, great and mighty to be praised. Let hope rise. Let hope rise and darkness tremble in your holy light. That every eye will see Jesus our God, great and mighty to be praised. Let hope rise. So let hope rise and darkness tremble in your holy light. With every eye we see Jesus our God, great and mighty to be great. God of all.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. We love you, God. Thank you for your word. So we just lay it all down before you. We lay it all down before you, God. We give you everything. Everything. Let's sing that together one more time. With everything. With everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. With everything, with everything, with everything. We will shout for your glory. Worship you, Lord. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. Our hearts, our hearts, they cry. We glory. in this place, Lord. Thank you for your power that has healed us in this place, God, and that you are our Savior. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, give somebody a high five next to you. Tell them they look good in the house tonight. Right. Well, hi, everyone. I feel so loved. Hi. <laughs> All right. My 
name is Mikey. Hi, I'm Emily. And we would like to welcome you to the house tonight. We'd love to especially welcome our first time's guests. Uh, we've got a little card on the table, so if this is your first time here attending the house, first I'd like to say welcome home. And uh, we've got a little card on the table. If you could go ahead and fill that out, and we'll give you a nice little gift in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, what else? On the table, we've got programs. Um, you can see upcoming events. And on the other side of the programs, you can follow along notes for tonight's sermon. Um, and then you can also check out other small groups and events on our website, housenorthwest.com. So are there any youth in the house? <laughs> Tonight we are going caroling. So if you would like to go or you want more information, basically, talk to Katie and Erin. Katie's over there. And December 18th is the youth Christmas party. So wear an ugly sweater. You should, at least. I'm going to wear mine. And it is a white elephant a gift, chain, ugh, gift exchange. Um, invite your friends because it's going to be really, really fun. And you're going to want to get our gift because it's the best. <laughs> and there is no youth group on December 25th because it's Christmas. So don't come because we will be by our Christmas trees drinking cocoa. All right. Okay, next week. You don't want to miss it. You want to be here December 21st for candles, carols, and communion. Uh, we're wrapping up the, uh, the, the Christmas message on that night. And uh, bring your kids because I hear the big man in the big red suit is going to be there. And he's going to have mm. gifts for all the kids. Nice. So you don't want to miss that. Invite your neighbors. Invite your friends. Invite your family. It's going to be awesome. So I'm excited yeah. for Santa. Santa. And, and we're going to have the Christmas story read by our very own Tex. Awesome. Awesome. So it's going to be awesome. We're excited for it. Very cool. So you'll see a little envelope on your table, and that is for our offering. We don't take an offering, but we do give you the opportunity to partner with us in your finances. Um, you just want to put it in that black box over there by those candles. And if you write a check, make it payable to the house. If you're online, let's wave. Hi, online people. You guys didn't even wave. <laughs> okay. So if you're online, you can click on the little giving tab. It's on your right-hand side on your screen. And it will open up a new tab so you can continue to watch the service. And tonight, speaking on giving is Ryan Morrell. Yeah, Ryan. Give me a hand. Ryan Morrell. Yeah. Woo. Okay. I like the intro. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, so every week we have someone give their testimony and what it means to give and um, scripture. So, you know, I'm nothing different, really. Just, uh, you know, I've had plenty of um, my own testimonies, Chelsea and I, and I've been up here talking about them. And, you know, you give and you give back, you get back. It's just how the Bible works. It's awesome. Um, you know, I've been, uh, I've been giving for a while and one, I just want to share like a scripture that has really kind of stuck with me. Um, something I always lean back on if I'm, you know, times are tough and I'm, you know, really struggling with finances or um, I maybe I haven't given in a while. <clears throat> going back to the roots of what I, when I first learned about giving, um, this scripture I can always remember. It's, uh, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. It's talking about where the Corinthians are being encouraged to be generous. Uh, verse 7, it says, but just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, and knowledge, and complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. Now, you look at that, that verse, and, you know, it's specifically talking about, you know, the grace of giving. Not only that, but it says to excel in it. You know, we all have, you know, our life adventures. You, you start out with, you know, going to school, and, uh, and then you get a job, and you move out, and then you get your own career going. And you're excelling in life, right? You're getting better. You want to get, you want to grow in life. You get a career. You want to excel in your career. It's something that you're always trying to get to the next level, trying to build retirement, trying to get a raise, whatever it may be. But life is full of us trying to excel in something. And man, with the, to excel, it just means practice, right? So more you practice, the better you get. 
to be able to excel at something. So giving is nothing different. I mean, if you want to excel in giving like the Bible teaches us to do, it just starts with practice. And the more that you do it, the better you get. And trust me, it is a blessing to, to be able to excel in that area. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm always striving to excel in this area because it's important. Um, another word for excel is just basically taking it to the next level. So let's just take it to the next level. I'm, you know, you're going to see all these blessings happen to you like Chelsea and I have had. I mean, tons of stories. I, we've all heard stories, but, man, it's just God has never, ever failed for us. He's always been there every time. And I completely, 100% believe it's because we give, and we give diligently. So um, I just encourage everybody to take it to the next level tonight, all right? Father God, we just uh, we love you so much, Lord. Uh, we give tonight to you, Father. Um, Lord, that whatever we give tonight, Lord, that we know that we're going to be blessed. And Father God, we just strive to take it to the next level to excel in that area. And Lord God, just speak through Mike tonight as he brings a word. We love you in your name. Amen. It's good to be in the house, isn't it? Right on. Put my lunch right there. If you just don't mind for a minute, I'm just getting myself situated. Uh, 70 year old George went out for his annual physical all of his tests came back with great results Dr. Smith George everything looks Dr. Smith said George everything looks great physically how are you doing mentally emotionally are you at your at peace with yourself and you have a good relationship with God George replied God and me are tight we are so close that when I get up in the middle of the night poof the light goes on and I go to the bathroom and then poof the light goes off Wow, commented Dr. Smith. That's incredible. A little later in the day, Dr. Smith called George's wife, Thelma, and he said, George, it's just fine. Uh, George is just fine. Physically, he's great. But I had to call because I'm in awe of his relationship with God. Is it true that he gets up during the night and poof, the light goes on? And in the bathroom, and then poof, the light goes off? Thelma replied, that turkey's been whizzing in the fridge again. Come on. <laughs> no, don't commit to it, <laughs> you know. Well, welcome to the house. All right. <clears throat> well, you can pray for me tonight. I've been battling a little bit of a cold all week, and it's, I'm on top of it. I'm the head, not the tail, the top, not on bottom. And uh, God's word is true, right? And I had prayer tonight, and I feel much better already. And so, but just continue to pray for me, because you never know what will happen when I'm feeling the way I am, right? Anyways, Fred, how are you doing? Everybody say, happy birthday, Fred. He was 75 this year. Wow. 76? 80. I, okay, 75 was a while, five years ago. 80, I, see? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame the NyQuil on that one, all right? Congratulations. Should we sing happy birthday real quick? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Fred. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Wow. Now, if you get upset because we don't sing happy birthday to you, when you turn 80, we will, okay? All right, good. It's amazing. You look great. That's why I said 75, because you don't even look 75, you know? You look great. Strong as an ox, too, right? All right. Well, we're uh, doing a Christmas vacation, and uh, last week we talked about the story of Christmas and uh, some of those things, but we uh, showed a video clip, and so I want to show another video clip for us as we kick off um, this together now, and so go ahead and get it rolling here. This is a new non-caloric silicon-based kitchen lubricant. My company's been working on it. Creates a surface 500 times more slippery than any cooking oil. Ah, we're really gonna fly down the hill with this stuff. Has anyone ever used it on a sled? Not that I know of, Russ. Don't go putting all that stuff on my sled, Clark. You know that metal plate in my head? 
How can I forget? I had to have her replaced because every time Catherine revved up the microwave, I'd piss my pants and forget who I was for a half hour or so. So over at the VA, they had to replace it with a plastic one, and it ain't as strong, so... <laughs> I don't know if I ought to go sailing down no hill with nothing between the ground and my brain but a piece of government plastic. <laughs> you really think it matters, Eddie? Well, you see, the, the plate runs right underneath my part here. And these over here, it's, you know, nothing. But, but here, if this gets dented, then my hair just ain't gonna look right. I know the feeling. Well, I better try this first, see how it works. Well, you be careful there, Clark. That's a... Nothing to worry about, Eddie. Going for a new amateur recreational saucer sled land speed record, Clark W. Griswold, Jr. Remember, don't try this at home, kids. I am a professional. Later, dudes. <laughs> Let her rip, ain't pen. <laughs> All right, that's our clip for tonight. All right, so as we talked about Christmas and why Christmas vacation, you know, Christmas vacation just kind of amplifies all the funny things about our own families. You know, who doesn't have an Uncle Eddie, you know? Like, like I talked about last week, I have an Uncle Arlo that was my Uncle Eddie, you know? And I actually had an Uncle Edward and uh, went and hung out at his house one time and he freaked me out. But anyways, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, putting up the lights, getting the trees, all the different things. The Christmas vacation talks about, you know, so many things that our families deal with. And, uh, and so when we talk about the Christmas story, um, you know, we, we know the story. Uh, actually, Emily read it to us out of uh, Luke chapter 2. It's also my scripture as well that I'll be reading tonight as well. But an angel speaks to both Mary and Joseph beforehand and tells them, go to Bethlehem, and because uh, there was a census being taken, and they had to go to Bethlehem to be counted. And uh, on their way, she's great with child. She's really pregnant, ready to have, give birth to a uh, baby Jesus. And God, the angels, like I said, speak to them, tell them about it. And um, so they get there to Bethlehem, and there's no place to stay. And so the innkeeper sees that she's, you know, having contractions. She's ready to have this baby. says, okay, well, I've got this barn in the back you can stay in the barn in the back at least you know you won't be giving birth in the streets and so that's where you know the birth takes place and so they go and they camp out and the son of god's born and so let's uh take up uh luke chapter 2 verse 8 and following it says there were shepherds camping in the neighborhood they had set night watches over their sheep suddenly god's angel stood among them and god's glory blazed around them and they were terrified the angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everyone worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town, a savior who is, is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the highest, or uh, glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. And as the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. These verses right here encapsulate what Christmas is all about. Just like I talked about last week. There's three main themes that these verses talk about. The three main themes are, first of all, a celebration. A celebration. We talked about that last week. 
a celebration then and reinduce, reintroducing joy into the Christmas season and how that we can do that. I talked about how uh, really joy doesn't come from stuff. How, you know, people tend to, you know, the whole Black Friday thing, and we talked about that, how, you know, people want to go shopping, get up there, get, you know, not, it's not even get up early anymore. It's, you know, get out right after Thanksgiving dinner and get the best deals and things like that. And really, uh, you know, we, we shared scripture that talked about how, you know, just going after stuff won't bring you joy. It won't bring you peace. It won't bring you happiness. The only thing that can do that is God. And then that we need to go to him. And as we go to him, he brings us joy and he fills us with joy. And so Christmas is all about a celebration. It's a celebration of who he is and what he's done for us and what he's continuing to do for us. The second part of what we're going to talk about tonight is salvation. If you look at what the scripture says there again, the angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town, a savior who is Messiah and master. A savior is born, one who has come to save us, right? And then the third part, what we're going to finish up next week is reconciliation and what that all means and what it means for us and, and, the, and the ministry of reconciliation that God has given us as believers in the body of Christ, okay? And so tonight we're going to talk about salvation. There's a scripture I want to bring up to you, and it's found in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 and following, it says this. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we've heard so that we don't drift away. For if the message spoken by angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? I want you to take your pen on your notes and just underline that or write down such a great salvation. The one thing you need to understand tonight is salvation is amazing. All right? And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it, what? That's that salvation again, by signs, wonders, and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. That term salvation in the Greek is the term soteria. Soteria. Um, you can fill that in if you <laughs> want to write something Greek down. <laughs> Soteria. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because if I talk about what salvation is, and I just use English definitions of the term salvation, we might think, okay, well, it's what I kind of think it is. It's just fire insurance. And for most Christians, salvation is just fire insurance only. All right? For most churches, when they preach about salvation, it's just one thing, to be saved from going to hell so that you can go into heaven. How many of you heard that taught before, right? Sure we have. We all have, haven't we? Because, yes, that is part of what salvation is. It's being saved from our sins, being saved from going to hell, being saved from all the bad things that the devil wants to do to us, right? Right? so that we can have all the things that God has for us. Now, I grew up in a family. It was a very modest family. And uh, we grew up in Kirkland, Washington, uh, just north of here a few hours. And uh, I went to Mark Twain Elementary School. And for, uh, at Mark Twain Elementary School, I, I went there from kindergarten all the way through sixth grade. Matter of fact, when I was in first grade, it has been told to me that Miss Val went to kindergarten there, and I was a big bully, and she didn't like me. Now, that's not true. She's lying, all right? Because I'm a wonderful person, and I've never been a bully, all right? It was the word on the street. <laughs> it was the word on the street. That's it. All right. Okay, so, again, I went to elementary school, like all of you did, went to primary school or whatever you called it, and uh, my parents didn't... Um, <laughs> Couldn't afford for me to buy hot lunches. We always thought hot lunches, the kids that ate the hot lunch were like the coolest kids. You know what I mean? We just thought, oh my gosh, look at the hot lunch. <laughs> Doesn't that look delicious? Now, for me, my mom worked at uh, a ministry uh, for the Assemblies of God, and she would make me the same thing every single day. The same thing every single day. 
and it looked a lot like this. It is, uh, my baloney has a first name, it's O-S-E-A-R, my baloney has a second name, it's Oh, I love to eat it every day. No, I didn't. <laughs> and if you ask me, because no, Oscar Mayer has a way, B-O-L-L-G-N-A. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> bologna sandwich, right there. Now, this is a bologna sandwich on white bread. It does not have the typical orange mustard, the yellow mustard, that I normally had on that, all right? That was my lunch every day. Now, she would throw in every once in a while, like half an apple or half an orange or something like that, but bologna sandwich was what my lunch consisted of, and I'd watch people come out of the hot lunch line, you know, and they'd have their pizza or they'd have something else, you know, green gravy. I remember green gravy with the turkey loaf. Yeah. yeah. Mashed, potatoes. Mashed potatoes. And I'd think to myself, boy, that looks delicious, as I'd bite into my bologna sandwich. All right. My point is this. All right. For most Christians, salvation is a bologna sandwich. Okay. For most Christians, salvation is just this. It's real basic. One thing. All it can do is fill you up. Will a bologna sandwich fill you up? Sure it does. I'm living proof of that. Matter of fact, it filled me up very well. All right. And, uh, it, it did the job that it was required to do, right? And for most believers, Christianity and salvation is just there for one thing, and that is their fire insurance. They don't want to go to hell. They want to go to heaven. And so they say, all right, I'll take and receive this salvation. But remember, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that it's such a great salvation. Say that to your neighbor, such a great salvation. Okay, so when we look at soteria, what does that mean? What does that mean? Salvation defined in the Greek, that soteria means this. Welfare, prosperity, deliverance, preservation, salvation, safety, healing, and health. Now, salvation, a lot like a bologna sandwich for a lot of people because they just hold on to the one part, and that's his you know, save me, God, right? And not realizing there is so much more to salvation. It's almost like you're in a five-star restaurant. You know, uh, Roger, what was the name of that restaurant we went to up on the hill and took that Russian pastor to? Charter House. Wow. If you ever in your lifetime, save up, because it's going to cost you something, all right? We went to dinner, and we took this Russian pastor out to dinner, and we just blessed him and his staff and just loved on him and blessed him. And boy, what a great meal that was. But could you imagine going to order, you know, that's a steakhouse, right, Roger? Imagine going up there, and uh, the waiter comes up, you know, and he's all in his tuxedo, you know, little thing over. And, what would you like, sir? Oh, I'll take a bologna sandwich on white bread. Uh, I just, that's good for me. I'll just take a bologna sandwich. That's, that's fine for me. Wait a minute. You're in a five-star restaurant with steak and lobster. There's a lobster tank right over there that if you just say the word, I think that's how they do it. <laughs> and they scream, oh, no, I'm, <laughs> you know, you have the opportunity to have this amazing meal, and yet you choose just the stay, just the bologna sandwich, how foolish is that, it's crazy to think that we just go for the bologna sandwich when we have such a great salvation that includes all of these amazing things that are listed there for you in this definition. There's some main themes to these words here, and I just want to point them out to you. The first one would be redemption. Redemption, and that means purchased at a price. Purchased at a price. Jesus Christ paid the price for you 
so that you don't have to go through bad stuff. Jesus said it himself, I am come that you might have life and have it to the fullest. I love that, John 10, 10. The enemy comes to rob, kill, and destroy, but ye, I am come that you might have a great life and have it to the fullest. He's prophesying to what he was going to do on the cross by the work that he was going to do on the cross. And he came to give us life all day long, I've been confessing. Thank you, God, my chest is filled with the life of God. Thank you, God, that my sinuses are filled with the life of God. Thank you, God, that my digestive system is filled with the life of God. Thank you, God, that my throat is filled with the life of God. Thank you, God, that my body, my bloodstream is filled with the life of God. Why? Because my body needs the life of God. Am I filled with Christ? Absolutely. Is he full of life? Absolutely. He is the life. He is the resurrection and the life. He lives within me. He has redeemed me. He purchased my body with a price. Now it's up to me to live for him, just like we sang the song. You know, with everything, we will shout out your glory. With everything, we give to you, Lord God. Because he gave everything for us so that we could have all of those things that I listed off before. Redemption. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. What a great old hymn. I'm not going to sing it to you. You're welcome. The second part is deliverance. And again, most Christians, again, the baloney sandwich is the redemption. And that's all the farther that they ever get. And it's really sad because there's so much more. Second part being deliverance. I love this about God. That he has paid the price. He set me free from anything and everything that will keep me from being anything and everything that God wants me to be in life. People say, you know, I, I have a struggle, Pastor. I'm, I'm addicted to this or I've got this problem. I've got this thing that just hangs on me. It just hangs on me. I have good news for you. You don't have chains that have locked you up. Those chains have been broken. Jesus Christ, by the work he did on the cross, broke the chains. He broke those things that were tying you up and holding you back. There is nothing, no addiction on this planet that can hold you back because Jesus is more powerful and he lives within you. You don't want to smoke anymore? Great, tell him. I don't want to smoke anymore, Jesus. You paid the price for my deliverance. I'm going to allow it to be set free in your hands. I don't want to pay 10 bucks a pack anymore. Boy, that was quiet. I thought people would get a little more excited about that. You know, Ryan talked about being excellent at giving, you know, wanting to give more and the opportunity to give more. There's an opportunity to give more right there. You know, God, I give a pack a day or a pack a week to you, Lord. There's an extra 10 bucks I can give to the Lord. There's a thought. You see, we've been set free. We're delivered. Jesus said it himself. If the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Deliverance. Set free. Nothing can hold you back from being everything that God wants you to be in life. Everything. Well, I don't know, Pastor Mike. I'm too this, or I'm too that, or I'm this, or I'm that, or I'm... Mm. No. Those are just things, and they will not hold you back from being everything that he wants you to be in life. The only thing that holds you back is you. God wants you to be free, and he's paid the price for your freedom. Walk in it. Walk in it. The third part is this. Healing to a point of health. By the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross, healing work becomes ours. There is a constant working of God's life and power in every believer. Again, in him we live and move and have our being, the Bible says in the book of Acts. In him. Say, that's me. We live and move and have our being. There is life force that is moving in our life at all times if we will access it, if we'll believe it, if we'll take a hold of it and let go of the bologna sandwich and say, okay, God, you paid the price for me so I don't have to just eat an old bologna sandwich anymore. I can have it all. 
I can have the riches of blessings. I can have whatever you have for me. I can have the healing that you've got for me. I can have the deliverance that you've set me free with. I can have the redemption and the salvation. Yes, yes, yes. But there is so much more. Healing to a point of hell. I praise God that he's done that. that By the work that he did on the cross. Some people may say, well, Pastor Mike, you know, I'm... I'd like to believe that, but I've seen people that were believers in Christ, you know, they died. Yeah, they do. A lot of people eat bologna sandwich at lunch, too. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to eat the bologna sandwich. You don't have to settle. You can go for the more. Which leads me to my final point, and that's this. Provision. Provision. Praise God for godly provision, for heavenly provision. Praise God for this. God provides for his children. I've told this story many times before how God has made, met our needs so many times. The, the time that we were in Wenatchee and hardly made any, got any money from this pastor, came home and at Christmas time, and yet God still came through for us. I had a time one time where we were really hurting for finances. We just were praying about it. And, and a pastor friend of me called me up and said, yeah, we had this car and we didn't know what to do with it, so we sold it. And then I t- asked my kids, what do you want to do with the money? We can go on a little trip or we can go on a little vacation. We can go out, do something fun, have a party. We can, we can do anything we want with it. What do you want to do? And the kids, all of them, and he had like, I don't know, how many, eight kids, all right? They all said, let's give it to Pastor Mike. And so he calls me up and he says, hey, yeah, my kids wanted to, we wanted to give you this money. It was right when we needed it, guys, right when we needed it. God comes through for us. He never lets us down. He never drops the ball with us. He'll always take care of you and meet your needs. You know, what is prosperity? It's having more than enough to be a blessing on every occasion. That's what God wants for you. That's what God has for you. It's being, having more than enough. Wouldn't that be nice to not have to worry about things or to be anxious about things or sometimes flip out about things? Hey, I flip out occasionally. But praise God, you, get, you call the right people and they, they encourage you. They say, hey, it's going to be okay. He's never let you down. He's going to come through again. He's going to come through once again. He's going to do something big for you. More than enough to pay your bills. More than enough to give at church. More than enough to bless anyone God tells you to. Bologna sandwich or steak and lobster? Really the choice is up to you. What you want to do with the salvation that he's provided. Such a great salvation. You know, if it was just the being set free from knowing you're going to go to hell and going to heaven, that's a pretty good deal in and of itself right there, right? But to know there's so much more, so much more. I praise God for the so much more. Don't you? Sylvia, earlier we had a little quiet moment and I was just wondering, did God put something on your heart at that moment? If you didn't, that's okay. But I thought, I I started looking back for you going, where's Sylvia? Because I wonder if she didn't have something from the Lord. Sometimes she just writes them down earlier in the day. but That's good too. Did you have something? Amen. So when the worship came out, go forward. Yeah. And feel this presence of the Spirit. Amen. It's tangible. 
Amen. You know, I, I really believe it goes right along with the, the bologna sandwich thing. Because a lot of Christians, they come to church, they stand, they sit, they kneel, they, you know, wherever, whatever, right? All the different things that people can potentially do. But um, we do experience the power and the presence of the Lord here. And but it takes something for you to do. I think of um, Brother Hagen tells a story, told a story. He's in heaven now. But he used to have a church that he pastored, and he had a group of folks that were just crazy enough to go for it with God. And they would dance in the spirit. And I'm, when I mean my dance, I mean they didn't just do the, you know, Pentecostal two-step. <laughs> right? I mean, they would just cut loose. And these old ladies with buns would start spinning around. Buns, that's... Oh, you guys know what bun heads are, right? Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> ladies with buns, they'd start spinning around like a top and shouting and screaming and all of a sudden... Their buns would bust loose. <laughs> Not those buns. The hair, right? And it's just like, phew, you know? And he'd look at them, and they'd, they'd be so happy and so free in the spirit. And he'd say to himself, man, I, God, when, I, when you're ready for it with me, I'm ready. Just go ahead and touch me, Lord, and then I'll, I'll dance like they dance. Excuse me. And then one night, he decided, you know what? They look like they're having so much fun. I'm just going to jump off the platform here, hop down there, and just go for it. He said, when my foot stepped out off the platform, I was in the flesh. He said, but when I hit the ground, I was in the spirit. And he just started to praise and worship God and dance in the spirit uncontrollably. I long for that freedom in our church. I long for people to be so free that they can dance in the spirit and laugh in the spirit. I long for that. And I can pray for it and I can ask God for it. And he's all ready. I believe that he's ready. It's just going to take some people stepping out. I um, had an interesting thing happen to me when I was in Africa. I was in a prayer meeting. And when you have prayer meetings in Africa, they're not like prayer meetings here. This is like a three-hour prayer meeting. That's a, quick, that's a quick prayer meeting in Africa. So we were in this prayer meeting just praying in the spirit and all of a sudden the spirit of God hit me. Boom! And I started spinning like a top. My eyes were completely closed. Now, you have to understand there were people laying all over the ground in this small missionary compound room. Probably about 20 feet by 15 feet. And there was people everywhere kneeling, laying down, praying all over the place. And they tell me that my eyes were closed, obviously they were, and I was just spinning around and laughing, and I spun around all throughout the people, all around and just like, and didn't touch one of them, didn't step on one of them. And I got done, and I, I stopped for a second. It only lasted probably about 30 seconds. And uh, I stopped, and the Lord spoke to me. He spoke, spoke something very personal and intimate to me that really helped me go to the new level with God. And I went to the one missionary that we were with, and I just went and confessed to him, told him what exactly the Lord had spoke to me. He said, this is what the Lord is dealing with me. And he said, yeah, absolutely, the Lord spoke the same exact thing to me. 
about you and that this is what God's doing. So there was confirmation there. And it was amazing. It was a beautiful thing. I think it goes right along with what Sylvia was saying. I think it goes right along with, are you tired of the bologna sandwich in your relationship with God? Are you tired of it? I am. I want it all. I want, I want the good stuff. I've had enough bologna and mustard and on white bread. Does that make sense? Amen. I want the worship team to come. We're going to sing. Get it going? I don't care. <laughs> I love you, Preston. You're the man. <laughs> we know you're the man. Let's stand together. If you want to come to the front, go ahead and come on up. Father, we just thank you for tonight, God. And your word on salvation. And then it's so much more than we realize sometimes, God. Love unchanging. God, your mercy never Yeah, really? 
I want to encourage you to worship it. Your love amazing fills my heart. I sing out. There is none like you. There is nothing like your love. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. I want to invite you to lift your hands. Lift your hands to God. And just worship Him. Give Him all your heart. Give Him everything. Oh, your love amazing fills my heart and I sing out. Something in your hip, maybe it's in the region of your hip, and and maybe, I don't know who you are, and we learned this the other day, maybe you're online in the World Wide Web world, that's awesome, um, get online and tell Colby it's you, but listen, if that's you, I just want you to put your hand on that part of you, I feel real strongly about that, just put that hand there, and just say this, say the life of God. The life of God. You know what? If you've got anything in your body, just touch that part of your body right now. It's your stomach. Maybe it's your neck, head, whatever. But just that person with the hip. Life of God is in me. And the life of God takes care of everything that's broken, that's missing, that's malfunctioning. In Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that you are going to begin to get relief right now. I just believe that because God's a good God. And come and tell me about it. Okay, Preston, it's your show. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue to worship. Um, but if you got to go, uh, go ahead and head out. If you've got kids, go ahead and uh, go ahead and grab them. Um, and then something that I wanted to share as well um, is that there's families in need during this Christmas season. And... Um, uh, we, uh, we take our opportunities um, to care for those families as best we can. And if God puts it on your heart um, to go ahead and give uh, to a family in need this Christmas, um, go ahead on the offering envelopes 
and just write family in need and go ahead and put whatever amount God puts on your heart and uh, go ahead and stick it in that black box over there. Um, but as I said, if you got to go, we love you. And uh, worship team will continue just to play. Love unchanging, God, your mercy never fades. And I'm surrounded by your compassion and your grace. Your love, your love. Brighter than the sun, more beautiful than words could ever see. This endless light shining over all and leads me to your glory everlasting. In your kindness. In your kindness for the broken and the lost. You gave your only son to bear my shame upon the cross. Your love, your love. Brighter than the sun, more beautiful than words could ever see. This endless light shining over all, it me to your glory